Rigo checked in at 1.30 this morning. 12 rounds for the 130-pound world championship. Tim it's so much bigger. He's got the three-inch height advantage. We told you what they weight with the right hand. Watch Lomachenko's jab. It is incredibly swift. Coming with a straight left hand down that time was Lomachenko as Rigo was caught in that defensive posture he's comfortable in. End of round one for the title. Hainewai 57 Unique find by his father when he was a kid. He took him away from boxing for a little bit, Mark. When he was 6'7", I would say the best footwork in boxing. So he took traditional Ukrainian dance classes. And, Timmy, you love Loma's footwork. Oh, distance. Look at the grasping behind the neck by Rigo right there. As I think Steve Willis is going to have to take control of things here at the conclusion of round number two. Holding behind the neck now by Rigo as he tries to fire off the left uppercut. Look for the straight left hand of Regan Dow. I mean, excuse me, of Lomachenko. There are moments when you watch Lomo and you see what he's able to do with his hands at short range. Stick string, catching quarters in midair. He's trained for dexterity, both physical and mental. Oh, his facial expression, the way he's reacting. You know, I, there's nothing that he can do right now besides hold to keep Lomachenko off of him. Tripling up a right uppercut is Pacheco the champ. is at his best. He doesn't look like any other fighter. He has what Pacquiao had, what Ali had. Looks like Lomachenko. He's he's a little bit of the best parts, the most sensational parts, the most entertaining parts of some of the all-time greats. But to your point, we haven't seen it before. With pressure. With pressure, he saw how his man reacted, he dropped right in front of him, and he split his guard with the uppercut. Just the fact to throw a triple uppercut alone, that is Vasily Lomachenko. What we see. You know, it's interesting because we've talked about that for months, since the time that he accepted this fight. You can't take this fight without knowing that you're going to have to take risks, Mark. Well, I mean, Rigandau says that he's taken all the risks he could ever take, oh, and nothing should... Look at this. This is moments ago. Watch him get him in a defensive posture. Know that he's got him pinned and say, you know what? I'm just going to turn right around you in the middle of a championship fight. Lomachenko well, haven't even turned it up yet. Midway point. Just watch. <laughs> just watch. Angles. Speed. I've never seen anybody play with Regan Dow the way he's playing with Regan Dow. Base final minute of round four. Goes back to the uppercut, then switches it up with the left hand as well. Comes to the inside. Gets a little work in the kitchen. Regandau landed a nice short uppercut in that, in that exchange. How about the body punch with the right hand? Now to the inside, the uppercut with the left hand as Rigo goes to the belt line. Tim, is this Rigo getting old or is he just outclassed? Outclassed at the very moment. But there's time still left, everybody. That's why I love boxing. You always have a chance. This is a whole lot of clinching. Rigo now. Inviting him forward, often trying to set traps, but not able to deliver. <laughs> Timmy said, outclassed so far tonight by the champ, Vasily Lomachenko. Rigandau says he's seen everything. Nothing worse could be done to him than was done in Anatoly Cuba. I don't think he's seen this before. What he is seeking to be, and that is the perfect fighter. Goal. This is such a unique relationship with Anatoly Mark. It's usually a, a failed experiment to create a perfect athlete in anything much dangerous and treacherous is this one the strength and conditioning coach champion for world title in your second pro fight 
and you make that transition to the pro ranks. Guy comes in overweight, roughs you up, continued low blows. It's a learning lesson well, by heart until you've learned from a loss. Oh, I, I don't think your career becomes a dramatic proposition until you lose. So it's really, I'm going to tell you this, it's really hard hitting a guy that's going down so low like that. It really is. That and time I, he turned to give an angle with the right hand. Needs to. I would, I would throw my, I'd throw my right hooks like he's did, did right there. That's what I would do. And hold it. Mary threw his punch with the most oh. intent that we've seen tonight. Look at Lomo as he's being ridden back. I think Steve Willis is going to have a that. lot of work ahead of him as we get to these middle and later rounds here of this world title fight as Loma's in control. I'll show you what happened after the bell at the end of the last round. And this thing is getting chippy. And watch this. This is well after the bell here. Oh, that was something that he was missing in his repertoire. You know, and, and I like it. I honestly like it. He's not going to allow anybody to be dirty with him. Bernardo, what can you offer? You know, in the corner, it was very interesting because they told him, we want you to spin him. Point. Yeah, that Salido fight was the great learning experience. Put a notch in the belt. And now he's dealing with it perfectly here against Rigandau. And you can see he's getting a little more used to some of these tactics, especially with Rigandau. Now turns to the side, takes the angle to the left to try to find something. A guy who was once a hero to countrymen, and then Fidel Castro called a traitor as he... Deep into the autumn of his career, he is finding the most skilled fighter in the world opposite him. Another combination from Loma, and Loma once again looks over at Willis. As we come to the end of round number six here. ...going on in the corner of Rigandau here in between the sixth and seventh round as they're looking at the tape. That's it. He is saying I don't want any more. Are you kidding me? The undefeated number seven pound-for-pound -pound fighter is not...